Hi, this is Paul Holtz from Class on Demand, and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be showing you the famous Star Trek transporter effect without any blue or green screen. So this anybody can do with your editing system. It's very simple to do, but I'm going to show you some elegant ways of using that old effect and kind of modernizing it a little bit, okay? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be showing you how to do this today, okay? This is really simple. I did this myself. It took me about 10 minutes. Pretty cool. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some variations on that theme. We're actually going to add some particles to me coming in. Show you how that works. And then lastly, you can use this on any size element. And here we go again. Pretty cool. All right, so let's show you how to do that. So let's go over to our source footage here. And you'll see that what I've done is I've locked down my camera from a distance and I've shot plenty of footage where the car is just sitting there by itself in the garage, okay? And then what I've done is I've I've went over there, kind of positioned myself as uh, uh, a guy who's being transported into the garage and I am live there. That's not actually a still footage. I've actually kind of made sure that I kind of look like I'm I'm not moving, but this effect will work if you're moving or not. So that's my first effect. And then the other thing that I did was I basically, you know, brought in my motorcycle, sat on it, and made sure that each time I brought these new scenes in, I shot plenty of footage on it with the camera locked down. And once again, you can see that that background footage never changes. And that is the whole technique of today's lesson, a lockdown camera. This is one of the oldest types of effects there is, but still very effective and a lot of people use this, okay? Let's go back here with my timeline and I've set up a couple of different projects, okay? So you'll see that the first part is I've just simply edited a clip right now that has nothing but the car in it, okay? Now this next clip, okay, let's just go ahead and kill this for a second, this little dissolve. This next clip is nothing but a cut to me in the scene, okay? I've just moved forward where I was sitting there and I cut it and all I'm doing is doing a little bit of a dissolve between the two effects. This is very classic, been used for years this way and you can see that as I'm dissolving in, it looks like I'm actually dissolving in. And the reason that this works, once again, is because none of the other pixels, with the exception of where I am standing, uh, or kneeling in this case, um, is changing, okay? So this effect works really, really good. Now, the reason that it works so good is because none of the other luminance values in here are changing. Now, this is gonna be a problem if you try to do this outside. Clouds are moving through the sky, um, and uh, you might have trees moving in the background. But if you can control the environment, this effect is really, really good, okay? So now what I've done is on this first series, I've actually done exactly what I did over here, except this time what I did was I went in to my Noel Light Factory, okay, and once again, today, I'm using this on Pinnacle Studio 16. This effect will work virtually on any editing system out there, period, end of story. Now, you might have some of these effects that I have, like, you know, these lighting effects like lens flares and stuff, and we can add a little bit more realism to this effect if you use that. So what I've done here with Noah Light Factory is I basically created three keyframes, and you can see that all I'm doing is on my first layer, which is the car layer without me in it, I'm actually um, bringing up a little bit of a lens flare, moving it a little bit, you can see, so it looks a little bit more alive, and then fading it out. And if we turn off solo where, and, and we see what the dissolve looks like, you can see that it's perfect. You line it up with my body, and you can see that it dissolves out at the same time and the same rate of the dissolve that I have as I'm bringing myself in. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead, take another look at that. And down here, I've simply grabbed the transporter effect. There's about a million different places you can get this off of uh, Google if you search for it. Just type in transporter wave and there's a bunch of different places that'll give it to you. And so now if you uh, line this up, which I have right here, let's look at this again now.
So remember, that's the same effect as over here where it's just a simple dissolve up. But now that I've added that light in there, looks really cool. And of course, the transporter sound doesn't hurt anything either. It's a very, very well-known sound, looks great, and it gives it all the more realism right there. Now, there's one more thing that I want you to look at here. What I've also done is instead of using a simple dissolve, I've used a particle effect, okay? And if you look under our, um, our library of effects, it's under standard transitions. And what you want to do is go down to the one that's called matrix four wipe, okay? And if you look at this and test it, you'll see that it does kind of this, this uh, real blocky pixelated wipe between A and B, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I want you to look at something and I want you to realize how transitions work, okay? You see how it's blocky, but it's just blocky where there's a change between the two video scenes. That is really helpful for us because what we want to do is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this matrix wipe right here. This uh, picture is the same as this picture over here, okay? Now watch what happens when I do that matrix wipe in between it. Let's go ahead and hit play. And you can see, you don't see anything changing here. Even though it's doing a matrix wipe between the two, they are exactly the same photo. So no pixels are changing. So that's the reason that you can't see the wipe. There's been no luminance change, no color change. And we can use that to create a really great effect without using chroma key uh, because of that, because of that characteristic, okay? So in this scene, remember, this is the same scene as this, and the only thing that I'm changing is the way that I'm wiping or transitioning into the scene where I am, okay? So once again, if we go through this slowly, you'll see that it only pixelates where you can see luminance changes in me and on the floor here and all that. So it's a very cool effect if that's the type you're looking for. And once again, I've given it the same little lens flare that I did uh, on this other one using the no light factor. You can use any light uh, lens flares that you might have. But once again, this is another cool way of bringing it in. And the reason that you don't see the pixels on the rest of the screen, because this would normally be something you could only use with a green screen or a blue screen. The reason, once again, like we showed you over here, is because there are no changes in pixel uh, types or luminance values over here. So you're only going to see it where there's an actual subtle change between the two photos. Okay, so that's a real cool thing. So people that want it to look real pixelated as it comes in, you can do it that way too. Very cool. And the same thing will happen with the motorcycle over here. We could use a simple dissolve over here. Very, very cool. We might want, because it's a much larger element, we might use a couple of different lens flares. Maybe maybe we put one in here. Maybe we would put one kind of where my heart is um, or the back of the motorcycle. Maybe there's three different ones to give it even more uh, realism, okay? This is a great way of looking at everyday elements and, sh and, and bringing them in creatively into your scene. Shoot the scene without it and then lock your camera down while you're doing this because there can't be any shifts or anything on that camera. And then what you want to do is either dissolve it in or use one of these cool wipes to bring it in. So let's grab this matrix wipe and replace that right there with a matrix wipe instead of a, di instead of a simple dissolve. You can use kind of that particle dissolve up instead. Pretty cool. So that's how you do a very, very quick transporter effect um, without using a green screen. Most people do it with green screen. I just showed you a really quick and easy way to do it without it. Remember how transitions and dissolves work. They work based on luminance changes between two different scenes. So if you're, if you're gonna lock down that camera with the same scene, you can do some really great special effects just bringing those elements up over a period of time. You could use it for one element and then add another element and then add another element. You could build a whole scene of elements this way. So real simple, real easy to do. Um, and make sure you go to Class on Demand's Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash Class on Demand. We've got a whole bunch 
of really cool videos over there. So go ahead and like us there and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, I'm Paul Holtz from Class on Demand and thanks so much for watching.